Hi, I'm Willie. Welcome to my channel. Thank you for being here. I appreciate each and every one of you. If this is your first time here, please go click subscribe. If you need IT consulting, go to willyhow.com, fill out that contact form, and someone will be in touch with you as soon as possible. Um, whether you're new or returning, thank you very much. I do appreciate each and every one of you. What we're going to talk about in this video is all of the Unify controllers, all of the controllers, all the different types. Well, at least we're going to talk about the ones I know, because there are probably Unify controllers that I don't know about that are running out there. But, uh, you know, let's let's get down to it and talk about your options for running your Unify controller. Now, if you want to run your Unify controller on site, you've got you've got a lot of options. Uh, the best options um, are ones that are you know mainstream supported. So let's talk about that. So uh, Cloud Key Gen One that is still supported. So that device is you know the little white Cloud Key. It does not have a battery backup in it. It's the one that if the power goes out a couple times, you're going to probably scrog your database. Uh, but still viable options, still have people running them. You can still find them out there. You can still buy them. So, and still supported by Ubiquity. Then you have the cloud key, uh, Gen 2. Oh, let's go back to the uh, original uh, cloud key. So not only can you run that on-prem, you know, then you pair it with the uh, unify.ui, and that gives you your two-factor authentication, which is super duper important. And it also has an SD card slot so that you can, you know, back up your configuration locally. Then you've got the Cloud Key Gen 2, which is that little silver box that has the little LED display and has the built-in battery and has the SD card slot. Um, you know, it's an upgraded uh, version of the Cloud Key. If it detects a power outage, it automatically powers off. Um, and there's also a rack mount accessory for that where you can put that in a 1U slot. Now, um, that leads us to the next Cloud Key, which is the Cloud Key Gen 2 Plus, which has the LED interface. It's uh, powered by PoE. By the way, go back to the Gen 1 Cloud Key, and that is the very first ones were uh, like a micro or mini USB, whatever you call it, or PoE. Um, then later versions of Gen 1 Cloud Key that had come out uh, were USB-C powered. So you can power uh, Cloud Key Gen 1, Cloud Key Gen 2, Cloud Key Gen 2 Plus, all with PoE or with USB-C. Now, Cloud Key Gen 2 Plus also runs Unify Protect and has, you know, a hard drive in it from the factory, but still, you know, auto senses that the power has gone out and uh, powers off. Now, all three of those cloud keys can either be installed on premise or you could have them in a centralized location somewhere and do some port forwarding and then host, a, you know, a, a unified controller, a centralized unified controller for multiple sites out of, you know, one of your other sites. And you can do that if you've got Dyn DNS you know, a dynamic uh, FQDN. Um, so if you don't even have to have static IPs to do that anymore. So those are like the three, what I'm going to call like front runners, like uh, if I'm looking at getting, you know, support from Ubiquity and I'm running those, I'm probably going to get pretty good support um, on the cloud key from Ubiquity on that. Then what you can do is um, you can run the controller and Ubiquity makes it available for download for Debian or Ubuntu. So you can download that. So you could run that on any Ubuntu Debian hardware, right? So it could be a Nook. Um, in our case, I'm going to show you a video where we are using a Protectly 6P for that for a customer. Um, it could be an old PC. It could be anything that runs Linux. It could also be well, well, we'll get it to what else it could also be, right? So then you have the Windows version that is available for download from Ubiquity. You can run that on any Windows machine. And then they also provide the Mac OS download version, so you can run it on Mac OS. Now, in all the years that I've been doing this, I've only seen, I think, three customers run it on Mac OS. And it worked fine. We didn't have to do anything to it. 
um, but it is available. So those, as far as like being able to host multiple sites um, with the controller, those are kind of like the options that are you know provided first and foremost from Ubiquity. Then what you've got is if you're moving into the realm of UDMs, so the UDMs run their own controller, the UDM standard and the UDM Pro all run their own built-in version of the Unify controller, and you can only manage a single site with those, and it is the site that the UDM is installed in, right? So that's a standalone uh, Unify controller that is specifically for each UDM that is deployed, and then the Unify hardware that is behind that. So now let's talk about some of all the other ways that people are running the Unify controller. So if you want to host it yourself, you saw that we had the download options for Linux for Debian or Ubuntu. They also provide an unsupported uh, Linux package where you can make it run. I've seen people have it running on CentOS and who knows what other flavors of Linux uh, they have it running on, but that's not supported. Um, so you could run it in the cloud on like DigitalOcean. Uh, Linode, Vulture, all those, you can run it on AWS, Google Compute, Azure, all the cloud uh, computing platforms that run Linux. If you can, uh, you know, run, uh, I would recommend running Debian or Ubuntu. Then if you look at the Windows side of it, if you have a VPS provider such as Azure or uh, AWS, where you run a Windows server, then you could run the Windows version. And I've never messed with hosting a Mac in the cloud so I don't have any exposure to that, but if you do, put it down in the comments. I'd love to see if people are using Macs in the cloud um, as far as VPS goes. So, you know, what are the advantages of the cloud controller, right? So a lot of times you can expand that hardware quickly. You're not uh, predefined to the hardware that you're running on site or the cloud key hardware, so you can do a couple, you know, different things. Maybe you don't have uh, uh, an actual routable IP address at any of your locations. So you need the VPS to have a real routable, real reachable internet, you know, uh, IP address. So, you know, you're hosting it out there. Um, the VPS, you can scale that hardware at any time. You can also, you know, lock it down, but it's still, a, you know, running in the cloud so that you still have some of those uh, same cloud-based risks for security. Now, um, if you, you know, we're talking about in the cloud, right? So if you don't want to manage the controller, but you need to run it and you want to, um, really push the limits of what you can do, Hostify, uh, by, uh, Riley Chase uh, is a fully managed service. You just rent the server from them. The server is optimized to run. Um, they handle all of the updates because that's something else when you're running your own controller or your own cloud key, you have to really think about is, how are you going to update? How are you going to test updates? Well, Hostify takes care of all that. There's also Controllerific. Those are the uh, two hosted Unify solutions that I'm aware of. I know there are others popping up all over the place, but those are the two. Um, you know, Hostify has, you know, Riley's been around for a while and Controllerific has been around for a while and is starting to make some inroads there. So you can check both of those out. Both of those services upgrade you know, all of the uh, back end Unify stuff when they believe it is stable. So there is advantages there. They can handle all the backups for you and everything. So, but that is hosted obviously in the cloud. So let's talk about some of the other ways. If you're going to host it yourself, you can host it. So we've seen people run it on uh, Synology and QNAP um, in Docker and you know, that seems to work out okay. You could run it in a virtual machine. So that's something else we didn't even talk about is virtualizing your solution on site. So you could run it in a VM on an, you know, in an ESXi host, on a Synology, on a QNAP, um, on a Hyper-V cluster, on a name a hypervisor, right? You could run uh, a Linux, uh, Ubuntu, or a Windows machine. Um, I mean, I suppose people have virtualized Mac OS and you could then run it on a virtual OS inside of your own network. There are some other things that I have seen. I know people are really hot on running it on a Raspberry Pi and I'm not so hot on that just because, you know, most of the time we see maybe power issues or SD card issues with Raspberry Pis. Now, reliability has gotten much better in recent years, but it's still... 
the raspberry pie. So I don't, I don't, that's not my first go-to, right? And then I've seen people even get it running on like PF Sense. Yeah, yeah, but your scientists were so preoccupied with whether or not they could, they didn't stop to think if they should. I've also seen it run on uh, Unraid or any of these other uh, applications that have Docker. So you can run it that way. No matter how you run Unify, one of the most important things you can do is link it to your UI.com account because then that enables two-factor authentication. And if you'd like to see a video of why two-factor authentication is, is important for Unify, let me know down in the comments and I will make that video. So uh, two-factor authentication is, is important for everything, but especially with something like Unify, where this is the infrastructure that touches all your networks. And if you've got client networks, you know, you need to really, really make sure that that's secure. So those are kind of your options for running controllers. Um, I don't know if it's going to change in the future or not. You know, we're all kind of like on this roller coaster, you know, together. So we'll find out when we all get there. But if you've got any questions about how to run the controller, where to run the controller, you know, put them down in the comments. You can also reach out at my website at willyhow.com um, and we will answer those questions for you. So I just wanted to give you this overview. There's so many different ways to run the Unify controller uh, that you should be able to find one that works for you and works for your customers. So if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. Please subscribe. Please comment and share. Please follow me on Twitter and Instagram. If you need IT consulting, go to willyhow.com. Fill out that contact form and someone will be in touch with you as soon as possible. If you'd like to support the channel, uh, you know, you can uh, use all of our affiliate links down below. Don't feel obliged to do that. But if you do do that, thank you very much. And it does kick a couple bucks over to the channel to keep gear and stuff rolling in. So I do uh, appreciate it when those are used. Once again, I'm Willie. I want to thank you for being here. And as always, I'll see you in the next video.